The point of this testing was to see how much various types of overclocking affected an AMD's APU performance, whether it be RAM speed, CPU overclock, or even overclocking the integrated graphics processor itself. I've always heard that you want to have the fastest RAM possible, but I wanted to test it out and quantify it for myself. So did any of that overclocking make a difference? Let's find out. So let's set the scene for my testing first. I have my AMD A107850K APU on an ASUS A88XME motherboard with 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident X 2400 MHz memory, all running on Windows 8.1. For determining the results, I used the integrated benchmarks on two separate games. The first being Tomb Raider because it has been shown to be a faithful representation of GPU benchmarking without taking the CPU into account too much. The second game I used was Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor because it has always been a faithful test of overclock stability for me. So up first was a test of single channel versus dual channel RAM. For this one, the RAM was running at its max speed of 2400MHz and only one stick was left in the dim slot. And the results on this are actually quite impressive. There's a 3.7 FPS advantage for dual channel with Tomb Raider and over 5 FPS with Shadow of Mortar being tested. Not too shabby. Every test further was run using dual channel memory. Up next was adjusting the RAM speed starting from the default 1333 MHz and going all the way up to the max rated speed of 2400 MHz. In Tomb Raider, 1333 MHz was able to net a 10 FPS average, but 2400 MHz hit 12.8 again, a 28% increase. As with single versus dual channel, the effects in Shadow of Mordor are actually more pronounced. 1333 MHz was a low average of roughly 9 FPS, and 2400 MHz was just about 12.9 FPS, a whopping 42% increase. Following this was overclocking the integrated graphical processor speed. For this, I used AMD's OverDrive software. The AMD A107850K has its R7 GPU clocked in at a default speed of 720 megahertz. For each test, I would increase the clock speed by 10 megahertz until it crashed, and then I would raise the voltage a little bit. I then concluded testing when the game would crash no matter how much I raised the voltage. For Tomb Raider, I was able to get the IGP up to 810 megahertz before consistent crashing happened at 820 megahertz, and the results are a bit sad to be honest. At no point did the APU crack a 13 FPS average, and all of the tests are within a reasonable margin of error. It appears that overclocking the IGP did nothing. However, Shadow of Mordor provides a distinctly different result. Using the same testing methodology, I was able to get the IGP frequency up to 1020 MHz. And while some of the max FPS results are anomalous and distort the chart, the average FPS did have a noticeable increase. From the base result of roughly 12.8 FPS at stock frequency, an overclock of 1020 MHz resulted in a 9% increase in the average FPS of 14.13. The next test was overclocking the CPU frequency of the A107850K. For this, I simply raised the multiplier and voltage in AMD Overdrive until it wouldn't run the game at all. And for Tomb Raider, as expected, there was no change in frame rate outside of a small margin of error, even all the way up to a 4.8 GHz overclock. And for Shadow of Mortar, to illustrate how much the IGP frequency overclock made a difference, I left it at 1020 MHz while I increased the CPU frequency until it became unstable. From 3800 MHz until 4300 MHz, there appeared to be no noticeable difference in frame rates. When I dropped the IGP frequency back down to stock at 4.4 GHz, you can see a sharp drop in the average FPS, and again, no increase all the way up to 4.7 GHz. So the CPU overclock made no difference here as well. So there was a lot of data that had to be sorted through, but what's the conclusion? Well, the two definitive things that you should do to get the most out of your AMD APU is one, make sure you're running your RAM in a dual channel configuration, and two, make sure it's running at its fastest possible speeds. As far as overclocking the IGP frequency, I'm not sure it's worth it. As we saw, it made no difference in Tomb Raider, and in Shadow of Mortar, I had to overclock at a whopping 41% in order to get a 9% increase in frame rates. Talk about a marginal return on investment. However, for some, that increase of 1 to 2 FPS could mean the difference between playable and crap. And then, as far as overclocking the CPU, just don't concern yourself with it if all you want to do is gaming. That is, of course, not true if you're playing more CPU-bound titles that I didn't have the opportunity to test here. 
But it seems to be that RAM and its frequency are the most important things that when it comes to your APU performance, which is just what most people say anyways. I just wasn't really expecting that overclocking the IGP would do so little. And I know that it could have also experimented with RAM timings a bit to see if that would have changed things, but unfortunately the motherboard that I was using did not like it at all if I adjusted the timings. And with that conclusion, I would like to give a big thanks to Woodware for making this project possible. They sourced all of the parts of this project with the exception of the games and the operating system. Make sure you head over to Woodware for any of your computer gaming needs, whether it be a new APU or even an open air test bench. Woodware has the selection, competitive prices, and exceptional customer service to earn your business. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to woodware.co.za to wood up your life. And that's it for this video. Hit the like button if you found it helpful. Dislike it if you disagree with my testing methodology and want to criticize me on things that I could have done differently. You can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my tech related content. And if you're looking to watch more of my videos, you can click this button right here to watch my most recent review of the PowerColor R9 390. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.